Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So you're probably seeing this episode around Labor Day, so happy Labor Day. I'm still working on the guitar build that I'm doing with that Wayne's World neck, and I've got some parts on the way, so keep following me, I'll finish that guitar soon. This thing is a pretty cool little thrift store project that I picked up recently, and it's a PV backstage amplifier from 1983. It's a 20-watt RMS amplifier. It's a single speaker. It's probably a 10. I haven't measured it, but it's got some issues. I've already plugged it in. It really doesn't work on very many volume levels at all. It cuts out and goes back and forth between loud and soft and that kind of thing. The tone controls don't work. The only thing that works very reliably at all is actually the reverb. I know this thing is completely disgusting inside, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it apart. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this faceplate. It's actually a baffle board, so I'm gonna remove the speaker, and that means you have to unplug it first. Now, we can take the screws out of the side. And as you probably heard, the baffle board is now loose. Well, this is freed up, so I'm gonna set it to the side. I've got quite a lot of cleaning to do to get some of this grime off of here. Well, so far nothing has jumped up and bit me, but I am gonna remove this reverb tank because I don't know why, but it's completely loose right now and I suspect somebody was working on it. And I think these things just unplug. Yeah, I'm gonna have to coax it with a screwdriver, but it looks like it does. And I'll take the rest of the screw out. It's almost all the way out. Ever wondered what's inside a spring reverb tank? Springs. I'm just gonna take the handle off. I'm just gonna do a lot of cleaning to this case and the handle's just gonna be in the way. All right, the last thing to clear out of here is the head. Uh, I need to hold this up while I do this. Let me get a couple clamps. Well, the spiders have made their way in here and that's not too surprising, but there's actually a guitar pick in here too. Who knows how that got in there? It's not a very good one either. All right, let me get some of this stuff out of the way and I'm gonna work on cleaning the case first. All right, well, there's obviously some filth inside here. I'm gonna try to kind of sweep it up as best I can with the toothbrush and that, that knocks off some of the layer of dust that's in here. Then I can hopefully just kind of vacuum it the rest of the way. But if not, I'm gonna hit it with a Clorox wipe or something similar. That worked okay, but it didn't come clean to my standards. So I'm gonna to go ahead and try a Clorox wipe in an area under the reverb tank, just to make sure that I don't take any paint off. It does take a little bit off, but it's not significant enough to worry about. So I'm gonna give this thing a nice wipe down. I don't wanna spray any cleaners inside here cause it is particle board. I'm probably not gonna know exactly how well that did until everything is completely dry in here. It's not too bad right now, but I wanna make sure that it dries out and gets to its natural color. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this part of the amp a little bit and right around the inside edges, just with some degreaser. All right, well, hopefully you can see the color difference between this and some of the outside edges. Not rocket science. I'm just spraying the degreaser, hitting it with a toothbrush, vacuuming up and wiping off the excess. So I finished up cleaning the cabinet and it's really actually really nice. I, I took some before and after shots of a couple of really dirty spots and I'll show you those. It's just a major difference between what it looked like when I started and now. And I've started working on this baffle now. So this baffle, all I did was wipe the sides. I've really got to get in here and clean this cloth though. And that's one of the hardest parts about cleaning up an amp like this, especially when it has a plywood baffle. And I believe this one does. 
yeah it's osb or something you can't get it super wet start out with a toothbrush and a vacuum and just try to coax the dirt out if that doesn't work i'll get the cloth slightly wet with some degreaser S still vacuum it and that'll help out Okay, well that's looking better than expected. I actually had a little bit of uh, degreaser on my toothbrush when I started, so that's why that spot's wet. And there's a tiny hole right there that I'm actually gonna touch up with a paint pen. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm not quite ready to reinstall it yet because I wanna clean up the head first. Inside here, the main thing that I wanted to do was clean up these pots. So I've been spraying some contact cleaner in, and I know, you know, contact cleaner is not always the best thing to use here. A lot of people prefer deoxit to this uh, CRC stuff that I'm using here, but it is working. And I guess there's some potential for the carbon film or the uh, resistor inside the pot to be uh, eroded away by some of the solvents in these things. It is fast evaporating. I've never had any bad experience with it. Hopefully I never will. This is a pretty straightforward process. There's an access hole in each one of the pots you can spray into. I can tell by the way, these are the original pots. They are made by CTS because they have the uh, 137 code on there. They have an 83 date code, which matches the amplifier. So none of these have been replaced. They're all original. That explains the scratchiness and the dirt. Uh, there's a little bit of spiderweb stuff going on in here too. So vacuum most of that out and this, uh, this should take care of the rest of it. So there's a stacked pot here. That's actually the difficult one to clean, but if I can get my straw in between the stacks and shoot that in there, then work the pot back and forth. That's the best way to clean that one. And then of course, any excess that's dripping out the front, make sure I wipe that up. The only other thing I do whenever I'm inside one of these things is look for any broken components. So if any of the heat sinks are loose or anything like that, any of the wires look like they might be disconnecting because these things move around a little bit. All the contacts on the uh, jacks and switches and everything look fine and the capacitors are really the biggest thing to look for after that. The thing about solid state amps is capacitors don't usually go bad all that often. It's possible for them to go bad, but these are only 50 volt caps and the voltages in a solid state amplifier are much lower than the voltages in a tube amplifier. So the capacitors tend to last a lot longer. These are 40 year old caps, but they still look pretty good. And visually you can often tell when a cap is bad when the ends are bulging or when the body of it's sort of bulging a little bit. It usually happens on the ends because the ends are not as strong as the body. Uh, there's also these little caps to take a look at in here. These are all electrolytic caps. All these ones in here, are these blue ones, but these black ones and that gray one are the big ones to look at. They all look okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together and see how it sounds. Okay, I took this out of the front earlier. I actually think it might be easier to go in from the back. You know, I don't think I ever showed the process of mounting the reverb tank, but I did screw that thing down a little tighter than it was. And I also put this handle back on top. Neither one of those was any more complicated than two screws. Well, my first test is gonna be with nothing plugged in. All right, let's see if any bad noises come out. You can hear the springs a little bit, that's fine. Okay, well so far so good. There's no scratchiness in any of the pots. There's fuzz obviously when I turn these three up, but I think that's because nothing's plugged into it. So let's go ahead and plug something in. Okay, let's just do a couple clean tones to see how this thing acts. I'm gonna take all the saturation out, which I think is mostly gain. Yeah, the post is low and the pre is low. I just wanna see. I just want to see how it reacts with uh, most of the settings down low. 
All right, well that actually sounds pretty good. Let's try a little bit more pre-gain. Yeah, I like that. There's getting some real bell-like tones in there. Interesting, okay. So all the pre. Okay, it's starting to pick up some gain there. I think that saturation really has extra gain too. It really gets muddy up top. do this amp any justice in my little test here but I do want to say I think uh, cleaning up the pots was just what it needed to overcome all the little issues that it was having with uh, I don't know it seemed like internal connections were just not being made it's working fine now and man that thing gets way louder than I would ever want to play it and that's sort of a signature of PVs I love old PVs an old 80s PV solid state was my very first amp mine had two tens in it so it was way more of a backbreaker than this thing this thing is actually quite portable and it's not that heavy and as loud as it is and versatile as it is with the reverb and everything it's not a two channel amp but man it's pretty cool so thanks a lot for hanging out y'all i really appreciate it i love when you guys give me those likes and comments i especially love it when you guys subscribe so i'll see you guys next time